back there in fifth place and today playing for pride they get a chance to knock off the east coasters in this fantastic occasion at eden park so there's the honopreneur carpenter boys let's check out the head-to-head -head record of these two teams the more coast fans there the well, it's been tight all the way. We look back to that 1999 semi-final and Mavina just one pointed at the East Coast 21-20 over Honofanua Kapiti. The year before that, uh, Honofanua Kapiti turned the tables. They had a six-point victory. East Coast 1910 and 1998 at Tolaga Bay. Levin in 1997, it was a 15-all draw. Then back to Tokomaru Bay in 1996, Honofanua got home. And that one, 24 points to 21. So history suggests it's always going to be a close encounter between Honofanua Kapiti and the boys from the East Coast. These East Coast fans getting ready for the action. They are excited about the big afternoon at Eden Park against the boys from Horofanua Kapiti. We'll take a break now and be back with Air New Zealand NPC third division action, East Coast against Horofanua Kapiti. Eden Park, Auckland, it's East Coast against Horofanua Kapiti in New Zealand, NPC, third division action. The big boys of the third division, East Coast, the reigning champions. They've come north today, they've given up the home advantage of Ruatoria, and they figure they might have a home advantage here today at Eden Park. Now there's a good looking coaster if ever I saw one. Blue rinse set of Remuera would be impressed by that. Natiporo, East Coast. It's a lovely day here in Eden Park. Let's have a look at the NPC Division 3 points table once again. Poverty Bay on top, East Coast in second place. Crucial stuff here, very tight at the top as it comes right down to the wire to see who gets the home advantage for the semi-finals and who puts a plug in for the uh, place in the final, the home final. Look at these final round matches in Division 3 at East Coast Horofanua Kapiti here today at Eden Park. The other crucial game really too is North Otago against Poverty Bay. If North Otago can knock over Poverty Bay, then it's crucial that East Coast get the victory today over Horofanua Kapiti because that might set them on the road to that all-important home final. West Coast play Buller and plenty riding on the South Canterbury Wairarapa Bush game as well. Hardly a breath of wind here at Eden Park as the Honopanua Kapiti boys make their way out onto the track. So having a look at the Honopanua Kapiti lineup, watch out for the captain number eight, Fabian Spencer. When you get a look at him, you'll realise very quickly that he is the brother of uh, Carlos Spencer. A couple of big lock forwards in Mike Collis and Greg Barclay and uh, Steve Free, a very mobile hooker. There's the number eight, Fabian Spencer. And you can see the family likeness. Without a doubt there. The big number 11, Lockini. Looks more like he should have number three on the back of his jersey. Had a bit of a try scoring drought this season. He'll be looking to end that today on Eden Park. And what better place to do it as the Horofanua Kapiti boys wait for the defending champions, Nati Paro East Coast. Number 15, the fullback, Lawrence Brickland. And East Coast are led out by their very impressive skipper, Wirihana Rehania. That beautiful sound of springs on concrete. Making their way down the north stand side of Eden Park. The boys in the Cambridge blue colour from East Coast. 
There's their skipper, number eight, Rihania Rehania. He's been in outstanding form for number eight this season. Horace Lewis, a vastly experienced loose forward, plays in the number six jersey. Victor Tainahui, the pocket battleship at halfback. And Manu Flutie, a former New Zealand cult, is a marvellously gifted first 5'8". You can expect him to control the game today and pace out the back with the likes of fullback Dune Harrison and uh, Jason Bright as well. Mano Fluti, the man up from the Hawks Bay. So the challenge laid down there by the Nati Poro East Coast team to the boys from Horofanua Kapiti. Reverie, Mr. Neffel McAllister from Palmerston North. So, Drakey, does that turn you on? It still does to me. I'm standing here on the sideline with these guys, and I feel like playing. Yeah, Max, mighty impressive, isn't it? Crowd's just building up, and if they wanted to get in here early and see that, they've certainly seen something to remember. What's the wind like down there, Max? Oh, very calm, very calm and relaxed. Actually, it's a very mellow atmosphere here at Eden Park. The wonderful uh, big city scene. Very mellow-looking Murray Mix did down sideline too, John Drake. As things get underway here at Eden Park, it's hot off an Kapiti. And the red, white and blue against the Cambridge blue colours of Nati Poro East Coast in New Zealand. NPC third division action from East Coast. Horofanua Kapiti taking the ball from the kickoff. A good drive early. Excellent work by the boys from the Nua. They'll keep it tight. They've worked at probably the best part of 15 or 20 metres up the park. Taken away there by the first 5'8". And that's Richard McLean. McLean puts the kick downfield. Harrison go back for it. Getting back and uh, taking it in the open side flank at Morgan Wetapa Jr. But it was knocked forward. But a nice start to the match by Horofanua Kapiti, John Drake. Fantastic start. Good forward effort. Really sucked in the East Coast. Forwards created a good opportunity down the blind side. East Coast just going to have to be careful. They've had a big build up to this match. But no one's really been talking too much about Horofanua. They're here for a game as well. Well, that's right, Horofanua Kapiti play for pride today probably out of out of the hunt for the semi-finals but they can binding, knock listen. over the high Number flyers one, it'll make their season victor tainahui feeds the scrum solid one from horofanua carpet they get the drive on picked up by tainahui flick back to horace lewis for east coast pushes off one pushes off another gets eventually taken in the tackle by matthew harvey Well, he's got them for obstruction. There's Lewis there, and they needed him. Their scrum was under pressure. He got the ball behind the advantage line and made some good yards from a standing start. Cleans through, and this is the kind of football which East Coast like to play, ball in hand. Probably a bit unlucky when the penalty came. Just a bit of obstruction there. You can just see their player. Referees laying down the law early. Horace Lewis, former Gisborne boys player, father of five. And it's Richard McLean who has the opportunity 
to give Horofanua Kapiti the early advantage in this Air New Zealand NPC. Third division match from Eden Park. Let's rip. And it is over. Well, that's just the start they wanted. I just said before, a lot of talk about East Coast up in Auckland. Not much about Horofanua. They won the toss, they got which way they wanted to play, and they've made a fantastic start. East Coast, we want to get their hands on the ball. Try and control it. Here's Horofanua Kapri, have had the best of the opening stances in this game. Across to Mano Fluti, though. 30 up to the centre three-quarter. That's Tyrone Delamere for East Coast in the centre of the park. Goes to the deck. Stay up! Plenty of instructions barked by Neville McAllister. Back to Tainahui. And coming across the fullback for Hotafanua Kapiti, Lawrence Brickland. The big punt downfield. Dune Harrison waits for it. Harrison, the fullback. His father was the coach of East Coast last time they played here, way back in 1987. Harrison still going. Good work from him. Taken in the tackle by the lockboard Mike Collis. Tainahui. Shows it one. Now he gets the pass up to the second 5'8", Graham Walker. Jason Bellamy is the lock forward who takes it up another metre or two for East Coast. But it's popped out on the Hotafanua Kapiti side. Back to the halfback, Wiramu Putaka. And the left foot kicked downfield by McLean. Harrison has to go back inside his 22. It's perfectly weighted. Plenty of pressure on him, and he's wrapped up and driven back a couple of metres. Good chasing by Ashley Drake. Horofanua Carpenter putting all the early pressure on East Coast. Only about a metre out, and they've got possession. Halfback Putaka. Very close to the line, and try time! It's the fullback, Lawrence Brickland, standing in the 5'8 roll and taking the pass from Putaka. And Horofanua Kapiti in for the try. What a start. Well, they always had the numbers once the kick went in field. Only a couple of East Coast players back there, that wasn't enough. And interesting enough, it came from two turnovers at mall time. The Horofanua guys using their upper body strength to good advantage. Dude Harrison, he's lucky probably not to get penalised here. He's playing, holding the ball on the ground. But it was just the numbers. The red and white jerseys were there. And I guess the second secret of this Hamish was that they got it out relatively quickly. And the East Coast defence wasn't there. They were staggered. You can just see them. Good try. But Drakey, the big thing is really there's only one team in this game. They've started with a hiss and a roar, particularly up front. I mean, remember that first scrum. They just drove East Coast backwards. They really have the bit between the teeth, this Horofenua side. Yeah, Murray, I think their body positions are probably a bit lower, and also they're just their keenness around the field, isn't it? They're getting a lot of numbers there. Well, Horace Lewis actually saved. Former New Zealand Colt, that is rugby in the Hawks Bay. 101 points. Taking over the kicking role this season from Victor Tainahui, who had a Mixed results last year, but Flutie has been very impressive this year. But not on this occasion, just pushing it to the left. So Horofanua Kapiti holding on to their early 10 point to nil advantage over Natiporo East Coast. A special occasion here at Eden Park. The third division comes to the big smoke. The green Neville McAllister. Because when they're getting quick ball, they're still getting the stragglers arriving at ruck time. They're not missing many at the moment. We saw Harry Lewis get through early on. Butaka feeds the scrum. It's in the van for Fabian Spencer across to McLean. He goes to the air, kicks long. Down towards Dune Harrison. He has support from Jason Bright. Harrison puts the kick down the centre of the track. Brooklyn, the try scoring fullback, waits. Um, aerial ping pong going on here. This is the big uh, wing three quarter. Lokini turns the pass back into 
Dave Terraha, Terraha, he's got support from Brickland, and he just puts a foot in touch as he tries to get the pass back inside. But again, we're just seeing how dangerous Rafanua Kepity can be. Now this bloke here, I think she thought he was a prop when he caught it. But he lined up his outside so well. Look at the numbers they had both ways. Calling for it. And it was just Dune Harrison that got across to make the tackle on Brickland. Defensive line out for East Coast. Advantage, Advantage going the way of Horofanua Kapiti. Advantage here. It'd be great to see a good scrum move here from Horofanua. Great opportunity. How about a classic old dart down the blind side? Yeah, Perfect the old position. Lefto, it's, it's made for it, no doubt about it. Scrum screws. Back for the halfback, Putaka. Horofanua Carpenter forced to regroup, but they take it up a metre or two. Putaka across to McLean, turns it back into Lakini. The prop and Posting is a wing three quarter. <laughs> Off to the number eight, Spencer. He's taken in the tackle by Laoweri, but it comes back to East Coast and cleared away by the second 5'8, Graham Walker taking the pressure off. But it's Honofanua Kapiti with all the early momentum leading East Coast by 10 points to nil. Well, they got out of jail just. They're building up some good momentum here. And you can just see it, I think it was Manu up front. I mean, they've turned over three balls that were East Coast. And apart from the one they've just spilled, they really do look well drilled and disciplined. Mike Collis, the luck forward with a good, solid two-handed take. See, that's another great drive. You remember they started the game with a drive just like this one where they took control of the ball. McLean, across to the centre three-quarter. Orbell. Kenny once again getting involved in the action. Prop forward is Jared Ryder for Honofanua Kapiti. It's all very impressive stuff for tension of possession. But it's rubbed away by Leo Weri for East Coast. Flutey. Across to the centre three quarter. Yellowmere with a big raking kick downfield. Brooklyn has to go back almost to his 22. Teraha, blind side flanker, flicks the pass to nobody. I have to agree and also give their forwards a bit of confidence as well, probably. And you've got to get a forward back into the game. I mean, if you don't get the forward back into the game, they, they could tend to become second fiddle. And, uh, you know, third division rugby, you can see one team dominating from the start and uh, psychologically the other team just fall away. Well, Manu Flutie's given that a good old-fashioned thump and it is over. Excellent kick in those difficult, breezy conditions. First points on the board. Richie McLean with the restart, 10-3. Honofanua Kapiti over East Coast. Horace Lewis has already seen plenty of ball in hand from Lewis, but not on this occasion. He's lost it. Goes to the open side flanker, Craig Tansley. Barclay. Support from him from Jared Ryder. Second 5'8. Matthew Harvey. Tansley again for Honofanua Kapiti. Always very close to these encounters between these two teams. Never more than four or five points in it. Butaka, cross for Richie McLean, only about seven metres out. Off into a cup, have had way the better of this game. Pass going to nobody from Putaka. Hansley goes back and picks it up. Advantage going the way of Hot Offenua a little twist and twirl there from Putaka. Fabian Spencer. Futaka again. McLean. Bricklin. The fullback loves to get up in the line, but it's well read by the defence of Graham Walker. 
across to Lachini. Tucker now, Brickland, Tiraha. Tansley couldn't control it, coming through and hitting it at pace was Ashley Drake, but knocked on, and it'll be a scrum for East Coast, a chance to relieve some of the pressure. Well, a lot of football, a lot of effort, particularly from Horrof and Nua, but they didn't really go too far. When they do give it a bit of air, they're always susceptible for the intercept, and that's what East Coast is looking for. Well, they got 22. Well, they just kicked too much ball away, aren't they? Quick one taken by Fabian Spencer, back for Putaka. McLean with plenty of time, inside is 22. He's it down the park. Waiting back there was Manu Fluti. Steps away from one. This is Grab Walker, the second 5-8. More like it from East Coast. We'll take the flank run behind him early, far side, blue flanker. Again, this will be suiting Hora for Nua. Good scrum, all the way to pressure on the tight head side. Flanker took a punt and came round. But this is what Hora for Nua like, they just slow it down, they go from set piece to set piece. Using the natural advantages they think they've got. Morgan Weirapar Jr. He was the man penalised. Mike Collis dominating that front of the line out for Hotafanua Kapiti. Lane moves it across to Brickland. That's a tactic they're using continually. Hotafanua Kapiti using his left foot. But again, it's gone to Dune Harrison. All a little bit sloppy and untidy here. An opportunity. But uh, it's Putaka. And the reason he had to do that was because there was a 50-50 whether he was behind the goal line or not when he got the ball. So he took the other option. Here's the wipers kick. Now East Coast did very well here. This is a skittery kind of football which they like. Creating the opportunities. And yes, he was. He was in play, so he did the right thing. Tyna Hui off to Manu Fluti. Up to Horace Lewis. Taken in the tackle by McLean. Goes to the deck. Tainahui keeps it going left again. Fluti up to Rehada and bursting onto it. The centre three quarter. Delamere in for the try for East Coast. The repost has come. They've been building for a while. So back underway for the coast through that man, Horace Lewis, again with another charging, bullocking run. Wetapa Jr. East Coast. Seem to have upped the ante now. Pace, Delamere flicks it behind him, back to Fluti. The interception though, taken by Fabian Spencer. And the referee Neville McAllister says there was a... Putaka. Across to Brooklyn, getting the kick in behind Dune Harrison, almost down towards the same post. In fact, it's Jason Bright back there. And he will let it run dead. Well left. Big dead ball area is Eden Park. He just waited and rolled and rolled. Well, if they hadn't have been offside, I think they would have scored. And he's over. The referee blew his whistle, though. Well, that was quick thinking by Dune Harrison, but we'll come back for the penalty. Makes you wonder if the game's just a bit too quick for the referee sometimes. So, they were given a penalty, now they, it's a scrum. Well, they've gone for the option of the scrum, obviously. The uh, horror general forwards are stronger and, and obviously better drilled, more cohesive, but the coast really look like they're full of running, don't they? I'm just wondering about the pace of the game for Hora for Nua. Might be affecting them in this kind of situation they love, where it's pretty static, but when, once the ball gets free, they don't like it. Now, that was really an error from the East Coast players. The ball didn't go 10 metres. They have the opportunity, if they as soon as they touch it and play it, 
then it's it's play on and that's the mistake they made here you can see the Harapanua guy just leave it and once he plays it he's in trouble Sutaka, the halfback, waits for Harpenur Company. McLean. Big wide pass out to Brickland. Puts it in front of his winger, Drake. Turn off on 20 First one by Red. Blue ball. The winger finally got the ball, you know, with player on top of him. Yeah, they're way behind the advantage line, which their forwards certainly wouldn't have liked. Rehania off to Tainahui. Support for him from Morgan Wirapa Jr. Now Rehania, the captain again. Leo Weri, Derek Leaf is the hooker. Hands off now. That was all right. Mano Fluti. Hands away. Just about to the game line. Back for Victor. Came out and back in. Came out and back in. Hang single offside. Stop red. Back to blue half back back in. Now Victor thinks that he got him for knock on, but it wasn't. It actually came off his knees, back into his own players. The referee was right. You can just see his knee goes back in there. It's interesting though that East Coast had three phases. That's the first time in this game they've put three phases together, which I think is fundamentally their problem. They haven't got the ability at the moment to keep hold of possession for more than one or two cracks. Yeah, they don't seem to have the patience, do they? They're either going to bust the line or for glory. Or they're going to try and do the 50 50 pass and either lose it in the tackle or lose it in the mall. Ah, the spirit of the background. The plane inside is 22. It's the clearing kick downfield. Carpenter did very well in the first part of this match had the early lead by 10 points to nil but East Coast have climbed their way back in to lead by 15 points to 10 fine looking gentleman just behind the hooker there East Coast just march it up a meter or two well they're copying off Harpenur aren't they and this man here has looked dangerous every time he's got the ball. Tainahui gets the pass from Laowiri, but it will go back. Here's and that allowed Horafanua to really make the game their own using the breeze behind them. Just kick. Authoritative try, well worked. Second try for Delamere came after some nice work from the wing three quarters. Across there was Narumu and Bright. The kick back in field from Bright and Delamere was there to score the try. Another look at that try. Just the thing here which was impressive was the numbers they had and they didn't panic. Realised that he had players in field. Bit unorthodox a kick. The results were always going to be the same. Yeah, it was definitely unorthodox, but brilliant work. Horofanua Kapiti supporters. Their team got a bit of work to do in the second half after a good start to the match. Well, the thing that stands out here is the missed tackles. Horofanua Kapiti started off very well. Turnovers, etc., have been pretty even. Rucks and malls and possession and territory relatively even. But it's the things down the lower part. I thought East Coast kicked a bit too much in the first half got the wind behind them in a second there might be a continuation of that but they've got to take confidence with the ball in hand because it's worked for them so far let's go down Sider now where Murray Maxted is with the East Coast coach Joe McClutchy hey Joe thanks very much for talking to us at halftime I got the impression listening to your team talk that you're pretty and half about to get underway East Coast leading by 18 points to 10 set for an excellent second half Straight down to Victor Tainahui and Mano Fluti, the first 5 8 for East Coast, who's had a big effect on the game. Replacement player on there, Randall Penny, or Horofanua Kapiti. Tutaka, Richard McLean is the first 5 8. It gives the possession away very simply to East Coast. Doon Harrison. Walker is the second 5-8 who puts the kick in behind. 
giving chase Narimu, but it runs into touch. Wemo. That's one of the Lakini brothers. That's the one that plays in the front row, although they both look like they do. With Victor Tainui to feed the scrum. Rehania. Scrum was screwing open side, but he went blind side. East Coast keep it. Really impressive, uh, the start of both halves. McLean goes straight through the gap. Richard McLean, the first 5'8", has support from the centre three-quarter. That's Bernard Orwell. He's taken the tackle just out from the 22. Tansley takes it up. Three. Tutaka. McLean again. Rehania goes in and makes the tackle. Advantage the way of East Coast. And the penalty goes the way of... Horofanua Kapiti against the fullback Dune Harrison. Very easy decision for Spencer. Take the shot at goal. Just East Coast guilty of playing the ball on the ground. This is an outstanding break. He looked for his runners. You know, I think it was Bernard Orville. He backed himself to go the whole way and he couldn't. So they decided to go straight through the middle of the ruck. And this you'll just see penalty comes up just playing the ball on the ground didn't have much choice because it was the last line of defense anyway but Horofanua the defense in the second half has been outstanding they've showed a lot of commitment first time they've been down east coast the end of the field and they make them pay so McLean with another penalty closes the gap to just the five points Horofanua Carpenter trailing East Coast in front, 18-13. First points of the second half. And there's that old adage. First after half time. Heard that a few times. Upped in the way, though. That'll be interesting to see if they can carry on. See if it's a repeat of the first half where they fade. Barclay, the lock forward, takes it from the restart. Back to McLean. Graham Walker goes in on the deck for East Coast and tries to reef this one away. Free plays halfback. Up to Tansley, the open side flanker. Fabian Spencer. Brickland. Tiraha. Brickland again, the fullback, scored the first try of the match. McLean. Harvey, the second 5'8", made that try scoring tackle just a few minutes ago. Popped out on the East Coast side now. There's a slight knock on, but good continuity from Horofanua. They look good when they've got the ball in the forwards. Good driving. When they go out wide, they seem to lose it a wee bit. Ball goes behind sometimes. He's an interested spectator. One of the form players of the NPC looking on. Rehania, across to Tainu. Who... That was bad luck. Play well, of course, the there's a rumour at the beginning of the NPC that Auckland were going to try and sell Robin Brock to East Coast. <laughs> Actually, glad they didn't. Just look at this. Yeah. Ball comes back. You really shouldn't have doing that. Tyna Hui back to Manu Fluti. Gets a pass across to Walker. This number one on the back. Just some of the discipline of East Coast lets them down. Just look at this. He takes it well, but I'm wondering actually if he's in the air like that where he's allowed to be tackled. Stay black. Stay black. Certainly robbed by Hora Fanua. Next, Joe McClutchy will have to be wondering about his team talks before the game and at half time because his players seem to go to sleep early on, don't they? Well, maybe the fact that he was so happy at half time went, got through to his team. Maybe they thought, well, all we have to do is turn up in the second half. Not straight at the line out. Exactly. I think it probably goes the old adage you've got to growl at your players all the time, and even if they do well. Yeah, you'd be quite good at that, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yep. Had a lot of practice. 
Well, it's the privilege of a front row forward, isn't it? The front row forward's the main to growl and be grumpy. Stay on, play, stay on, stay on. Not late at night, though. Mano Flutie with a little chip over the top. Orbo can't control it. Flutie almost had the opportunity to regather. Couldn't do so. And he goes to the deck like a loose board and tries to claim it. And it's there for Horofanua Kapiti. Wetamu Kutak on the halfback. Across to Brooklyn. Brooklyn up to Harvey. He goes without it. Picked up by Wetapa. Tanahui. Walker. Delamere for Tainahui, Ray Hania, Leo Weary, Leo Weary across to Bellamy, Bellamy to Morgan Wetapa Jr. Great work in there from East Coast, but it all comes unstuck with the knock on. Well, Rick Tainahui, the players just got in the way, but they're creating the spaces. And that's what they're good at. Good forward interchange there. A couple of missiles coming in. Shove goes on from East Coast. And tidy at the back for Fabian Spencer. Futaka back to Brooklyn. Harrison is the fullback for East Coast. He puts it on to the left foot, puts it high. It's going to come down towards the 22. Spencer brings it back. Turnover. Tanahui back to Flutie. Wide pass to Morgan Wetapa. Wetapa across to Narimu. This is Delamere. Up to the 22. He's taken by Tansley. Orbell goes and helps him out with the tackle. Watch your feet, up we come, stand up, leave him alone. He's knocked on by seven red. Leave him. Leave him. Well, you can't. Carpenter have come through and stolen this, though. What a great pass across to Rickard. Orbell, the centre. Taken to the tackle by Walker, but gets the pass across to Randall Penne. Derek Leaf coming across on him. Great run by the hooker, but good support, too, from the fullback, Bricklin and Orbell. Horofanua Carpenter have gone 70 metres up the park. They need to try and cut this one wide. Good work from Putaka. And some... Well, I think the referee could have picked any one of a number because these guys were in trouble. South African referees call it lazy running. But different style from Horofanua in the second half. They haven't got the wind behind them. So they're keeping the ball in hand, and it's pretty effective, particularly down the flanks, which probably suits them. They don't like the wide open space in the middle field, but when it's down the flanks, they like it. The inter interpassing cuts down the risk of the intercept. It was a tremendous passage of play, too. This is the passage that you're looking at at the moment, because everybody did the right thing, you know. No one was going to beat their man, really. But they put, some, put each other in space, and watch a couple of little uh, subtleties here. The ball's kept alive only just. And this player here hit the deck, released the ball, got up again. So he just, it, it's a class act, that actually, that little passage. Penalty attempt successful for McLean, his second penalty of the second half. And he has closed it right up. East Coast 18, Horofanua Kapiti 16. Match on her hands here. The lads from the Nua. East Coast looking to nail a home semi-final and also looking to put themselves in the hunt for a home final. So that be the way things pan out. Fabian Spencer, brother of Carlos, takes it up to halfway. Butaka, McLean, Orbel the centre. 
Big wide pass out to Dave Kitterhar, the blindside flanker. Coming across. Oh, high tackle there. Absolutely thumped to the deck. And Kitterhar puts up the uh, white flag hand. He knows he's hit him high. Yeah, I think it was it was really the opportunity of actually trying to get the ball because the ball was bouncing high. When he knew he couldn't get there, he took the closest thing to it. It's poor old Jason Bright. I don't think there's too much malice in it. Again, Horopanu is showing that they want to keep the ball in hand unless they're going down the flanks. And you see just how it bounces quite high. So his hands are up in the up in the kind of catching position anyway, if you like. So he just took the nearest thing he could. It was good schools by Gerhardt, put the kick through. And then he gassed through here on Jason Bright, and Jason Bright really, yeah, fair to say, ducked a little bit into that. Well, it's the situation, because Jason Bright's still down there. And so I guess the referee says, well, if he doesn't get up, you're going off. I think it's fair to say that Jason Bright shied away when he saw the player coming down on him, and he certainly had a crack at him uh, high, didn't he? I mean, there's no doubt about it. So he's gone to the bin, Dave Kiraha. And... Close match here. There's two points in it. Nobody claims it. Now Spencer flicks it across to Richie McLean. Well, that was untidy stuff. Interesting. East Coast have a man advantage at line-out time, and they decide to do a short line-out. They've just got a slipper a little bit too close to the head of Ashley Drake, who's clutching his head now. Yeah, it didn't look good. He fell on the wrong side of the ruck, that's for sure. And he had the ball in his hands, but... How close that ball was there, I'm not sure. Yeah, that was reckless from Ray Hania. He's been an inspirational leader of this East Coast side this season. And, uh, He's definitely on his head. OK, we'll send him off. Oh, well, this, well, Neville McAllister has intimated that he's going to send off the captain. Touch judge reported to stop on this player's head. I'm sorry, I'm sending you off and leaving the field. OK. Well, this is very disappointing for the captain of East Coast, Woody Hana, Ray Hania. Well, John Drake, I don't know what your take on that was, but, you know, it was one of those situations. Uh, well... Yeah, well, it's when, reckless around the head, I suppose. Yeah, there's, there's a d difference, I believe, in intent, though. And it, we can't see it from this angle where the ball is. If the ball was just on the other side of his body, then he might have just overstepped the mark. You never like to see a player getting sent off, but there again, the head is sacred in rugby. Yep. You can't argue with that. Woody Hunter, Ray Hania, has been an exceptional leader by example of this East Coast side, but he got it wrong on that occasion. Just the boots, just a little bit too reckless, and the call has been made by McAllister to send him off, and the free kick going against Hotapanua Kapiti from uh, against East Coast from the lineup. So. Both teams down to 14 men at the moment, although Rehania won't be back. It's all over Rover for him. Driven up by Lokini. The big men of the Horofanua Kapiti pack coming together and making some good yards as they grunted up the park, up Eden Park. Home for a day to third division action. Wiramu Putaka, he's the little man of the Horofanua team. He gets right in the middle of it. Putaka this time off to Tansley. Straight back towards the East Coast defence. Bumps off Tane Rickard. Horofanua Kapiti can sniff that right in this. Josh Dawson on in 22. Putaka, McLean. Straight up to the second by Ray Harvey, and he gives the pass to Orbeel. He'll hit it at pace and score the try. Horofanua Kapiti in front. Well, almost a replay. The East Coast try in the first half. Had a couple of backs hitting it very flat. The boards had done their work. Rolling Maul and the one-off runners must have gone 40 or 50 metres. And that was enough to suck in enough of the East Coast players. 
and it was just spot the spaces. Once they've broken the first line defence, the there's actually no one else home. So it was a formality. And those ha happy Potifanur Carpenter supporters as McLean slots the conversion. And the powers clearly move to Horofino or Capiti. Interesting how something like a sending off or one incident in a game can swing the whole match. Well, a real challenge for East Coast, isn't it, Mix? They've lost their leader. They want to keep their heads in the air. They want to move forward. You just sense heads going down a bit. Well, Ray Hania was such an impressive character at halftime, too. I listened to his halftime speech, and he, everything he said I thought was right on the button. They all looked up to him. He's obviously got great mana within his side, so they'll be, they'll be affected by it. There's no doubt about it. Drake puts the kick downfield. He was the man whose head Rayhania's boot came in contact with. Doon Harrison returns the kick to Brooklyn, the fullback. Josh Dawson, placement front row. Putaka tries to get away from Bellamy, just scragged. Well, these guys just got to get their hands on the ball. They're not getting any ball. This is good retention, all right, from Horofanur Kapiti. Have the lead by 23 points to 18. Harvey, he was the man that busted through the tackle of Flutie and set up all bell for the try. McLean. Back to Brooklyn. Well, interesting decision here. I guess it's Victor who's taken over the captain's seat. This was the end of a good piece of play, but he's just, once he's on the ground and he's still held, he's either got to let it go or stop, and he didn't either. So, East Coast, well, I guess they'll do. Rehani a sideline with his reserves and team management. Trying to hurry back to Flutie. Get up, get up! Waiting back there, Come Brooklyn, on, the fullback for Horofanua Kapiti, decides to bring it back, gets away from the first line of defence, gets away from the second line, taken by Derek Leaf, taking it on Fokatihi, John Fokatihi for Horofanua Kapiti. Big prop forward there at the back of the ruck was Jared Ryder, McLean. He bursts through, Richard McLean straight through, got support, Harvey, Matthew Harvey, Horror for Nur Carpenter cooking with gas, another try. Well, not for the first time, Richard McLean, he sliced through. This time his support was with him. And once the first line of defence for East Coast is gone, there's not much left. That's for sure. You can just see the lead up to it. So they're beating players at will at the moment. And then they've always got the support there. Just having time to pick the ball up and take it the next phase, and that's making the East Coast defence having to backpedal all the time. So they set it well. But look at this. Just the slight shimmy. You, you beat a prop, which isn't a hard thing to do these days. Offloads it. Simple try in the end. So McLean with the conversion to the try. Scored by Harvey, the second 5 8. And it's Hanafanua Carpenter now leading by 30 points to 21 over East Coast. And that just about to bring on their, their player that's been in the Simbin. Dave Tuaha is just coming on the field, so now it's going to be 15 against 14. So we've played for that 10 minute period with uh, 14 people aside, 14 men aside. Straight back, East Coast striking it back up through Simon Christie. Tainahui, Puti, wide to Delamere. 
holds the pass up. Now he gives it across to Jason Bright. He's taken quite a high tackle by Brooklyn, the fullback. Delamere goes in and supports Bright. But the possession goes back to Horofanua Kapiti. Forced them all, Horofanua. Jason Bright, he's not the biggest guy, so they held him up off the ground. That was enough. Clever move from East Coast. So everyone thought it was going on the inside. You can just see them holding him up. In fact, they held up just about everything of him. Well, it will be interesting to see just how East Coast can rally here. So often over history, you've seen teams with a man sent off dig a hell of a lot deeper and come up with the goods. As Fabian Spencer goes to the sideline for the blood bin, is it? Well, let's just see how the scrum reacts. They've certainly still got the weight. I think there's about 50 odd kilos difference. East Coast. Horofanua doing well, though. Tutaka back to McLean. Been an impressive first 5 8 today. Richard McLean. Yes, he's organised his team well. We've seen a couple of good breaks, but his defensive line work has been very good too. For the most part, they've subdued the East Coast midfield, which is very dangerous. Tane Rickard, the big prop forward, getting a bit of a breather. East Coast go to the short line out. Bellamy, quick off the top. Tainahui, Fluti, charging up Horace Lewis. They'll need to call on his experience now. Tainahui, Fluti, Delamere, chance here, turns it back into Dean Harrison, has support from Delamere, Delamere, he gets three, the hat-trick. And this guy's got some attitude. Has he what? The first try, he nearly put the ball through the soil. Boy, looks like he might have uh, pulled up a little bit lame as he gets the hat-trick, Tyrone Delamere. Oh, he probably just got a twist or something. But the secret here, I think, was the quick ball, and they continued to go on the open side, which really stretched Horofanua. They weren't expecting the in pass, and it was great backing up by Delamere. Just as the player was going to the ground, they freed it up. Look at this. He orchestrated it, really, for the player to come in through the gap, but then he was there just to get the... And his momentum really carried him over. Took a couple of heavy hits, but he's a happy man. Well, three tries in a match. That's a, equals the record for the coast. Nailed it. So Delamere the try. His third this afternoon. Let's have one more look at this. Lovely cut out pass from Foodie. They changed the angle by bringing it back with the uh, eluding the defence with Dune Harrison, the fullback in, and he was able to pop the pass up to that man, Tyrone Delamere. Incredible support for East Coast at this end of the ground, too. I think half the coast must be here. And Flutie's big kick is going to go into touch, 80 metres down the track. Playing on back to Brooklyn. an interesting call yeah. I don't think a line out was formed but unless the touch judge oh okay no it's actually East Coast ball that was the problem it wasn't high front of a ball Derek Leith Bellamy China Hui Taken by Josh Dawson. Well, Harpanua, they did everything right. They hustled and busted the line out and got the drive on. It was just the stray hand which cost them. And the way Flutie's been going, you'd have to have a go. A goal. He should be confident that uh, Manu Flutie could nail this one. Let's just have a close look at this. 
because they had the momentum on. I think the player on the ground there he just put his hand there. He didn't squabble with the referee, so he's probably guilty as charged, sir. Josh Dawson, replacement player on for Horan Fenua Kapli in 22. Well, good crowd, good occasion. Ahead of the first division clash this afternoon. Good idea, I think, all round to have the coast here playing Horafanua Kapri. The leading scorer in all three divisions in season 2000 for the NPC, Mano Fluti. Big solid first five eight. And he comes. Looks pretty good. Over. Great kick. Whatever wind was there, he didn't worry about it. Didn't worry about the fade. That's why he's the leading point scorer in all divisions. Speaking to the uh, management and bench of the East Coast team, and they reckon the reason that for the comebacks is plenty of heart on the coast. Plenty of heart displayed by their gallant team here today. I think they think they've won. Well, look at the history of these two teams on Eden Park. East Coast came up here and had a crack at Auckland B way back in 1955. Went down 26-11. Challenge for the Ranfurly Shield in 87. Lost 72 nil. Horifer Nua had a crack at the Shield in 80. That wasn't a bad effort. 37-3. And in 86, it was a slightly different story. 82-6. You around for that one, John? No, but I was there in 87 when... Uh when East Coast came up, I remember going to work the next day and seeing some opposition coming up Queen Street. They hadn't been home. <laughs> Tadahui back to Fluty inside the 22 with the clearing kick. Kept in play by Orbell. This is Drake, Ashley Drake. Tansley the open side, more good work from him. Placement half back on. Brooklyn shows it once, gets it wide to Orbell. He can motor along the centre three quarter, all arms and legs. Delamere makes the tackle. Tansley in support again. Orbell goes in there like a Lucy, the centre. Protects the possession, does well. Karoria, Brooklyn. Barclay plays halfback across to Malasia Lokini. A real test of the metal of East Coast now with 14 men. Josh Dawson drives it up for Hotapanua Carpeti. Referee calling for the release, it doesn't happen. Penalty goes the way of East Coast. And a great tackle on the East Coast. Turned him the wrong way. He conceded a penalty, I think, just before, which got the points, which got him behind. And here he gets turned. Look at that. Now, Wedi, the big man, born up in Lavuka, Fiji these days. A coaster at heart. He's been there about five years. East Coast taking the quick one. Fluty across to Delamere. He's got three tries this afternoon. Gives it up to Narimu. Koru Narimu. He goes to the deck. East Coast trying to apply the element of surprise there. in midfield there, the replacement player Kyle Williams bumps into Orbell. Big time wrestling, I think. Referee says play on. Graham Walker took it in there, second 5-8 for East Coast. Delamere, Flutie. Yeah. Now I think as soon as Flutie heard the penalty call, there's no way he was going to do anything else but just take it up. He got hurt in the tackle. But I think we know what he'll do. Now this is where the referee called the penalty. 
see his arm going out, so Flutie probably ran in front of him anyway, just in case, and there's no way he's going to pass it. Probably would have thrown the ball to Horror for new if necessary to get the penalty back. I think it's been a good performance by Neville McAllister, the referee, today. He's been really strong. He's had lots of uh, suggested uh, comments from both teams, and he's been quite, quite strong. I think he's been very, very fair down the line. And he's play, tried to play the advantage, except that one occasion that you picked up, Drake. He's tried to play the advantage. I think he's, he's helped this game become respectable to lose. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Flutie's kick is just to the left. Dropout. East Coast hanging on to the lead, 31-30. With a dropout from the 22. I mentioned earlier the, the 14 men against 15 scenario. How often the 14-man team digs so deep, you'll remember. 1977 when Manawatu had the shield and Kent Lambert was set off against counties and it looked all over over they came back and won that day and East Coast looked like they might be up to repeat that sort of performance nine points behind when Ray Hania the captain was set off now they lead by 31 to 30 back to Mano Flutie for the drop goal but it's charged down comes back to Walker Walker gives it to Dune Harrison he looks for the support Picked up by Simon Christie. Flutie again. Kicking down towards Ashley Drake inside his 22. He comes up towards Narumu. Narumu makes the tackle and puts him into touch. Ashley Drake called for the mark. Wasn't given. He'll ask the question. Derek Leap, the hooker. Let's go. Mike Collis wins that one away for Horofanua Kapiti against the throw. The sheer milker. Jared Ryder. Tight head prop for Horofanua Kapiti. He might have lost this one though. With the hands coming through from East Coast. Penalty Horofanua Kapiti. Now, a couple of minutes to go, to slow it down, go for field position. Get the drive in the line-out. We've seen them very successful today, Horofanur, at line-out time. They can get two hands, they can drive it 20 or so metres. And set up their outsides for one last go. That's fine. Yep, that's fine. That's good. Let's go, let's go. Drive. Heading for a super climax here at Eden Park. Great occasion, the ground in magnificent condition and wasting time against Horofanua Kapiti. This will help the East Coast well, cause. It's Josh Dawson, He's not, it's not his afternoon. Placement hooker. Delamere, three tries across to Dune Harrison. Harrison has Bright in support. Jason Bright just scragged across into touch by Randall Penny. Time running out for Horofanua Kapiti who started both halves so well, and at one stage led by 30 points to 21. Barclay. Teraha, blindside flankers, spent a bit of time in the bin. Matthew Harvey the second 5-8 scored a try in the second half across to Rico Randall Penny still going last throw of the dice coming up here for Horofanua Kapiti just one point in it Lockini desperate defence from East Coast they wouldn't want to give away the penalty Fabian Spencer Chance for the drop goal. Four bell the centre. Across to Drake. Here's Tansley, the open side in support. Turns it back into All Bell. And Tansley, hands like feet, goes without it. Well, they set for the drop kick. East Coast got there just in time, just upset them. 
so they went wide it was an opportunity here because it was man on man virtually it's the pressure yeah tansley might have nightmares about that one for a while the old butterfingers as Bell had done well the center to free him the pass defensive scrap for east coast horace lewis and he's driven into touch That's it. Referee Neville McAllister says full time and a gutsy, hard fought win for the man from Matiporo, East Coast, Delamere. He'll be having a big night tonight. Three tries for the centre three quarter. The man with the chrome dome that shone today at Eden Park with three tries, East Coast. They trailed at one stage by 30 to 21 in the second half. And they mounted such a fight back when their captain had been sent off, Wirahana Rehania, one of the inspirational players in the third division. But he had a little bit of a misdemeanor and his feet in the wrong place. Joe McClatchy, the coach, he was very happy at halftime. He wouldn't have been very happy 20 or so minutes into the second half. But gee, they've done the job this afternoon, East Coast. Well, smiles all around, but I think it's probably a bit of a wake-up call for them. Marafanua Kapiti came up here with probably no one expecting them to rate. And they gave as good as they got. The score was probably a reasonable indication of the game. East Coast, they go into the semi-finals next week, but I'm sure their confidence has been shaken a wee bit. Be interesting to see what the judiciary does about their skipper. But an outstanding game, and it just shows you the standard of third division football in this country. It's probably as good as some of the first division club rugby in the northern hemisphere these players they're probably not full-on professionals they certainly play that way and the attitude is outstanding that's what it's all about john is the attitude was superb and it was a game befitting eden park the final score east coast getting it 51 30 over Horafanua Kapiti, who certainly put it on the line today and gave it their best shot. Well, I'm not sure who Coach Joe McClutchy's calling. Maybe he's calling Mum at home, say everything's OK. And there they go. They're off down to see their supporters. And well, it's a fair feel, and I bet you there's a few Aucklanders that have just become East Coasters. Too right. A bit like the Samoans at the World Cup uh, back in 91. They won some hearts and some expat fans here today from the East Coast have come along to see their team. So too, a few busloads have made their way up from the coast. And they're getting a big hearty reception from the terraces. So that's it. The Air New Zealand NPC third division match played at Eden Park this afternoon. And it's the boys from the East Coast who sneak home with a hard-fought victory, 31 points to 30 over Horofanua Kapiti.